All right, we're at the AVX Advanced Vector Extensions part of the Intel manual. This is a really good thing. This is the objective today, to explain what Intel has to say about AVX. What I particularly like about this extension is that we get the YMM register now. Well, 16 of them, as you can see in the picture. And in Intel lingo, they say this is a promotion. So it promotes the legacy 128-bit SIMD instruction sets that operate on those XMM. The promotion will allow us to use the vector extension, VEX prefix. So instead of limiting XMM, we can expand it out to 256. So these are not separate registers. I had that confusion when I first started learning about this stuff. This is just like the extension to that old register. Now almost all prior generations of 128-bit SIMD instructions that operate on XMM, but mind you not the MMX registers, they are promoted to support three operand syntax. That's really fancy. And you work with these three operands with the uh, VEX, the VEX128 encoding. So the VEX prefix encoded AVX instructions support 256 and 128-bit floating point operations by extending the legacy. Okay, I've already said this. To support the three operand syntax, I've already said that as well. Now additional functional enhancements are also provided with the VEX encoded AVX instructions. The list of AVX instructions are listed in the following tables, so strange of Intel to do this. They uh, seem to be like me. I hate doing the same thing over and over, so instead of them just giving us a regular like table of contents, they give us a list of tables. Oh, and don't forget to check out my joke over here, since I'm so excited to move into the AVX section. It's fun to stay at the Y, M, and M. Alright, let's get a question before we get too far. How many bits are the Y, M, M registers? Except spelled correctly. Next question is... What prefix do you need to use to access these 256-bit registers? Oh, you see what I did there? Put the answer of one question into the question of the other. And actually, let me do it again. So what type of instructions are these that utilize VEX prefixes in YMM registers? The type of instructions are AVX instructions. So similar as before, at the beginning of this section, they're going to say we have these arithmetic type of instructions, and then we have data transfer, they say data movement, and processing instructions. Right? All of this is similar to what they've been saying before as each extension comes out. But this right here sounds pretty new in terms of functional enhancements. And look, it specifically says these uh, enhancements, these functional, these functions, were not available from uh, the legacy 128-bit SIMD instruction sets. So that's all those SSE instruction sets we just finished reading about. AVX is like the new dawn of uh, instruction extensions. Well, this odd boss is placed in between two very similar ideas, but let me go ahead and get through it. It says, Table 14.5 lists 128-bit integer and floating-point instructions promoted from the legacy. So cool, we can do integer and floating-point stuff with uh, 256 bits instead of our old uh, 128. But here, just like before, uh, functional enhancements, but 128 instead of 256. So that's a little confusing, and I think I'd even switch those two around if I was Intel, and I wouldn't sandwich this weird one in between the two. But maybe there's a method to their madness, because their last one is a 128-bit one too. So it's 128-bit data movement and processing. Up here, we had 256. So I guess a good opinionated question could be like, which table are you most fascinated with regarding the AVX instructions? And I'd probably say something like, table 14.2, because I love arithmetic. And for good do math with 256 bits, that's going to be big math. Alright, so 16-bit floating point conversion is the first uh, type of instructions we'll read about. These are all about conversion between single precision floating point, which is 32, to half precision. That's the 16-bit part of this title here. And we, in fact, read about half precision earlier in the manual, so that's cool that it showed back up. Maybe an easy way to remember these instructions is it starts with V, and V is for very tiny because we're talking about 16 bits. Now we have a fused multiply add next. I forgot why I drew an arrow and a question mark. Sometimes I take these notes and I don't even remember why I did something. But for fused multiply add extensions, these enhance Intel's AVX with high throughput. 
arithmetic capabilities covering fuse multiply add, fuse multiply subtract, fuse multiply add subtract interleave, signed reversed multiply, unfused multiply add, and multiply subtract. Okay, I'm gonna drive you crazy if I keep reading like that. Just check out table 1415 to see the list of the fuse multiply add instructions. Well, I probably need to separate those into two different videos, so let me do that. Here's the end of the video. We're going to talk about AVX2, and that's Intel's AVX promoting most of the 128-bit SIMD integers with 256-bit numeric processing capabilities. AVX2 instructions follow the same programming model as the AVX instructions, but in addition, AVX2 provides enhanced functionali functionalities for broadcast permute operations on data elements, vector shift instructions with variable shift count per data element, and instructions to fetch non-contiguous data elements from memory. So I ask, what's the difference between AVX2 and AVX1? And that'll be all for this video. Uh, table 1418 will give us more details about AVX2. Uh, same with table uh, 1419. But next time I do a video, I'll go ahead and talk about TSX and then SHA extensions, which is interesting.